reason we emphasize machines and technology is to free man to go to art centers, music centers, cultural centers, and to find the meaning of their own existence and lives. How much can machines do? Can they we run feel, the things that are necessary to run? Well, Mr. King, if we can launch a rocket off the Earth while it's turning, find a place on the moon, land it automatically, pick up samples of the soil, bring the ship back without humans, I think the Russians have done this, bring the ship back to the Earth, surely we can handle airliners or anything else with redundancy. The problem, though, is a political structure is how do you start changing a society this much which has really no political system? No, it has no political system. It is not affiliated with any political party. It is neither communist, fascist, nor socialist, nor democratic. Socio-cybernearing is a sort of a quantum jump, a, a severe departure in man's way of thinking. How do you make a severe departure with millions of people? With millions of people, well, I think you pretty much understand that most of the development we have in our society today, the technology, the airplane, TV, radio, uh, modern production technology, is really done by very few people. I would say several hundred people comprise the modern technological civilization. But you don't need pe millions of technicians and millions of scientists. How many people that you know of today sit in their home and play their phonograph and radio and TV have any idea of how this works. Now, it's just happening around them. I don't and, have any idea. And they're falling behind. What is happening to man is that his technological society, the newer value systems that dominate our times, that are pressing onward, are just leaving behind hundreds of thousands of people that cannot make the transition. In other words, people that can't change can be found in the Amazon jungle today, the headhunters. Yeah. And we've got to change. I think the book Future Shock was well, a book I worked it. on looking forward. Future Shock points out that there are a lot of things going to happen, whether you like it or not, that the future cannot be stopped by anyone. It is a continuous progression. But there are always going to be large groups of people going to have trouble handling it. Yes, Change. This is true. Is, look at the change of someone we agree. 60 years old has seen unbelievable change. In I believe life. they can change quickly if the information is made available to them. In other words, to present socio cybernering in one shot is extremely difficult. I believe that people should not be divided, uh, the, the youngsters, the adolescents, and finally the, the mature young adults, and then the older folks are all divided people. When you get to be 65, you don't want to travel on an ocean liner with old folks. How come we put up these buildings for the old folks? We think that people ought to live wherever the hell they want to live that cities must be designed so we have an integrated intelligent society. Uh, Einstein, when he was 65, 70 years old, he would talk to youngsters. He kept reading. He kept up with ideas. Why must societies be divided into different groups? We think that you're as young as, you, uh, as your life permits you to be, as your exposure, as your ideas. All right, let's